Two years ago, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk boldly predicted that United Launch Alliance, or ULA, would be dead as a doornail. Now, it appears his prophecy is coming to fruition. According to three sources who spoke to Ars Technica, ULA is likely to be sold before the end of the year. Investment firm Morgan Stanley and consulting firm Bain & Company are reportedly managing the transaction, though the details of the potential sale have yet to be disclosed publicly. If the sale goes through, it would mark a major shift in the global aerospace industry, as ULA is one of the world's most important rocket companies. It remains to be seen what the future holds for ULA, but Elon Musk's prediction may soon become a reality. This is the end of an era for the global rocket industry. So, what does the future hold for ULA? How did CEO Tori Bruno respond to the news? And who can step in to save the company? All these questions and more will be answered in today's episode of Great SpaceX. The sale of United Launch Alliance, a company that has been a cornerstone of the industry for nearly two decades, would mark the end of an era. ULA was formed in 2005 as part of a deal brokered by the U.S. government, which sought to ensure the military had access to both Atlas and Delta rockets to launch national security satellites into space. To create ULA, Lockheed Martin and Boeing merged their respective launch businesses, each taking a 50% stake in the company. This union proved to be highly beneficial for both parent companies, as ULA held a monopoly on launching national security missions and, effectively, NASA science probes. In return for a 100% mission success rate, ULA received large launch contracts and an annual subsidy of approximately $1 billion from the U.S. Department of Defense to maintain launch readiness. In response to a request for comment, Boeing and Lockheed Martin released nearly identical statements. Consistent with our corporate practice, we don't comment on potential market rumors or speculation about financial activities. Tori Bruno, CEO of United Launch Alliance, only said, thank you, in a tweet after a Twitter user asked, does Tori Bruno come with the deal? A testament to his exemplary communication and ambassadorship for aerospace engineering. This likely serves as an acknowledgement of the aforementioned information. Undoubtedly, SpaceX will not anticipate this as it will be losing one of its most formidable rivals. But what is the reason for this debacle? It's clear that ULA has been losing market share to SpaceX since the latter's emergence in the early 2010s. The Falcon 9 rocket, renowned for its reliability, was sold at a much lower cost than ULA's Atlas V and Delta IV rockets, giving SpaceX a competitive edge. Moreover, SpaceX successfully sued the U.S. government to gain access to national security missions and launched its first such mission in 2017. This has been a major blow to ULA's profitability. So, who can make the purchase of ULA? Despite SpaceX's dominance in the global launch industry, ULA still holds a prominent place. With no shortage of suitors, ULA has significant assets that will help them remain competitive. In May, they will debut their new heavy lift rocket, Vulcan, which may close the gap in terms of price competitiveness with SpaceX. ULA has agreement. ULA has an agreement with the U.S. military to launch 60% of their national security payloads from 2023 to 2027. And they have already won a commercial contract to launch 38 missions for Amazon's Project Kuiper satellite Mega Constellation. Additionally, ULA has sizable and valuable facilities in Colorado, Alabama, and Florida. And they have strong political capital in those states and beyond. The following companies could potentially be among the bidders for ULA as the sale process moves forward this year. It remains to be seen which entities will be vying for the chance to acquire this renowned aerospace and defense contractor, however. One of the parent companies, either Lockheed Martin or Boeing, could acquire the other. Lockheed Martin appears to be the more likely purchaser, given its recent strategic investments in the launch industry, such as its stake in ABL Space Systems. This move would further solidify Lockheed Martin's position as a leader in the aerospace 
aerospace industry. Amazon is also likely to be highly interested in acquiring ULA. The company owned by Jeff Bezos has already signed a Project Kuiper launch agreement, granting them intimate knowledge of ULA's business. This would give Amazon priority access to Vulcan launches, ensuring the Kuiper constellation is launched in a timely manner, as well as strengthening their ties to the Department of Defense. Blue Origin, another company owned by Bezos, may also be interested in acquiring ULA. Although there is a firewall between Blue Origin and Amazon, Blue Origin has already won a share of Project Kuiper launches, which comes out to 12 with its new Glenn rocket. However, there are some questions about how quickly new Glenn can be brought into commercial service. But by purchasing ULA, Blue Origin could consolidate its share of Kuiper missions and earn guaranteed funding from the Department of Defense as well as saving money on Vulcan launches by providing BE-4 rocket engines at cost. Other potential bidders include Northrop Grumman, which has a vested interest in national security and provides reliable rocket motors for Vulcan, L3 Harris, which has already acquired engine maker Aerojet Rocketdyne, a private equity firm such as the one that AE Industrial Partners invested in Firefly Aerospace, or even a technological giant like Apple, which is looking to develop its own space constellation for communications purposes. And finally, one cannot forget SpaceX. However, they might be sitting this one out as there's nothing for them to gain from it. In the end, the potential sale of ULA comes with many questions for the buyer. ULA is facing a number of challenges as it navigates the rapidly changing landscape of the global launch industry. Chief among them is the long-term sustainability of the traditional space company in the face of SpaceX's dominance. Additionally, other US competitors such as Blue Origin, Rocket Lab, and Relativity Space are emerging, though none of them pose an immediate threat to you. ULA. However, in the next 5 to 10 years, one or more of these companies could have a fully reusable rocket that is priced significantly lower than Vulcan. Moreover, ULA requires substantial investment to remain competitive. Over the past two decades, the parent companies have tended to extract profits from ULA rather than investing in the development of new technology. For instance, Vulcan was largely funded by the US military, which provided ULA with development grants grants totaling $967 million. To remain competitive in the new era of commercial launch, ULA will need to be liberated to innovate and have the necessary resources to do so. And that's all the information we have for you today. If you appreciate the work my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and we'll see you next time.